I am sure that whenever you look around in your garden or neighborhood, you see a variety of plants around you, isn't it? They may be of different shapes, colors and sizes. Plants can be grouped into few categories based on different characteristics. They are herbs, Small plants with tender green stems, usually having no branches, are called herbs. Coriander, mustard, wheat, paddy fall under this category. Shrubs are medium-sized plants with thick brown woody stems. Branches arise from the base of the plant, example, rose, hibiscus, etc. Trees are tall plants with a hard and thick brown stem. Branches are many and they arise from the upper part of the stem, example, mango, guava, etc. Have you ever seen a money plant or a pea plant? Are these plants other than herbs, shrubs and trees? They are called climbers. They have weak stems and climb up with its support of neighboring structures. Take a look at this watermelon plant. It too has weak stems and cannot stand upright and thus spread on the ground and are called creepers. Plants can be divided into two main parts. An underground part which remains under the soil and is called the root system and an above the ground part which remains above the ground and is called the shoot system. The root system consists of the roots. The shoot system consists of stem, branches, leaves, buds, flowers, fruits and seeds. Root is the underground non-green part of the plant body which fixes the plant to the soil. In plants like mango, carrot, there is a primary root called the taproot and from it a number of branches called lateral roots arise. Plants like wheat and grass do not have a main root. A number of similar sized roots arise in a cluster below the stem and spread out in the soil. Roots help in anchoring the plant to the ground, absorbing water and nutrients from the soil, holding the soil together and storing food which in turn is eaten by us as in turnip, radish, etc. The shoot system is found above the soil. Stem is the main axis of the shoot system which bears the branches, leaves, flower buds, fruits and seeds. It has an epical bud present at the tip of the stem and which helps in the lengthwise growth. Nodes are places from where the leaves and the branches arise. The portion of the stem between two nodes is called the internode and there are axillary buds too. These buds give rise to branches. A stem keeps the plant upright. It bears the leaves, flowers and the fruit. It transports water and minerals from the root to the leaves. It also transports the food manufactured by the leaf to the other parts of the plant. When young, green stem prepares food too. It also stores food in some cases like ginger, onion and potato. A leaf consists of two main parts, the petiole and the leaf blade. The petiole is a small stalk by which a leaf is attached to the stem. The broad, flat and green extended part of a leaf is called the lamina. The edges of a lamina can be smooth as in mango or serrated as in a rose. The stalk of the leaf continues into the lamina forming a midrib. The midrib branches out as veins which form a network in the leaf called venation. Venation can be reticulate where the veins are arranged in a net like pattern example people, mango or it can be parallel 
Here, veins run parallel to one another. Example, grass, wheat. The leaf performs various functions. It makes food by the process of photosynthesis. It helps in transpiration and also carries out respiration through the small openings on the underside of the leaves called stomata. Flowers are the reproductive part of the plant. It generally has four sets of parts arranged in rings or whorls. The outermost whorl is called the sepals. Sepals are small green leaf-like structures present at the base of the flower. They protect the petals in the bud stage and provide support to the petals when the bud opens to form a flower. The inner whorl consists of the petals. They are flat, broad and generally colored. They may be in one or more layers. They may be joined or separate. They attract flies and insects. If we remove the sepals and petals, then we can see the next word, stamens. They are the male reproductive organs and consist of two parts. A filament, which is a long, thin, tube-like structure, and an anther, a knob-like structure attached to the top of the filament. The anther produces pollens, which are male gametes. The innermost part of a flower is called the pistil or the carpel. It is the female reproductive organ. The top portion which receives the pollen is called the stigma. A tube-like structure joining the stigma to the ovary is called the style. And the ovary contains beads-like structures called ovules. The ovary turns into a fruit and the ovules turn into a seed after fertilization. The flower helps in reproduction and leads to the formation of fruits and seeds. Flowers of many plants are used as a food too. The nectar is a food for the insects. And for every other occasion, we use flowers for its ornamental value, isn't it? The flower develops into a fruit only when the pollen grains from the anther gets transferred to the stigma of the pistil. One of the agents of pollination is a butterfly. Plants are an important part of a life. Play your part in improving your plant life balance. Well, you can also check our other lessons through the links given on the screen. Thank you.